Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Rock Island taking a look at a TK, or a Tula Korovin. This is the first Soviet-produced semi-automatic pistol. Which is kind of cool. It was designed by a guy named Sergei Korovin. Uh, he was Russian-born, uh, and until 1905 he worked slash studied at the Kharkov Technical Institute in uh, working on firearms design uh, and manufacturing. And he got himself thrown out of Kharkov in 1905 for revolutionary political tendencies. Uh, so he left Russia at that time and emigrated to Belgium, where he took up shop or made residence in Liège, which is of course a fantastic place for people interested in being involved in the gun industry, uh, got himself a job in a Liège gun shop uh, making slash designing firearms, and actually had a pretty decent career until 1914. Uh, when World War I broke out, of course Liège is in danger and is quickly overrun, and Korovin decides to go back to his home in Russia. And he tries to get a job at the Tula Arsenal, but they're still not interested in him. They probably still have a file on him. Uh, and it's not clear exactly what he does during the war, but in 1920-1921 he finally manages to get himself hired at Tula. And by this point his politics are probably now working in his favor instead of against him. Well, once he gets into Tula he starts working on handgun designs. The Soviet Union is looking for a new pistol. They would eventually adopt the Tokarev, the TT-30, in uh, uh, TT-30, designed by Fedor Tokarev. But uh, in the lead-up to that there are a lot of pistols being designed, and Korovin in 1923 came up with a short recoil operated 32 ACP pistol. It showed some promise, but it was a smaller caliber than they wanted. Eventually, by the way, in 1929 they would scale that gun up to 7.62 Tokarev, or 30 Mauser caliber, but it would ultimately lose out to Tokarev's design. What did end up happening is they simplified it, they scaled it down, so this is kind of a new design, because it's now simple blowback, and now chambered for 25 ACP. And the Tula factory decided to market this on base, a sort of a commercial scale. Now, they weren't selling these guns to just ordinary citizens, ordinary civilians in the Soviet Union, but it did see purchase by a lot of security agencies. So on the one hand you have like the, the really governmental, like the NKVD, uh, purchased a bunch of these, but then the military also purchased them to issue to people like officers. Um, and other folks who didn't necessarily need a service sidearm, but ought to have some sort of weapon. So 25 ACP is, you know, this is a sort of a pocket pistol style of defensive weapon. Not intended to be a military weapon, just personal protection sort of thing. So uh, let me show you uh, the details of it up close. What we have is a simple blowback, single action uh, pistol here. It is striker fire, so you can see the telltale sign right there of a striker fired pistol. This is the safety, forward is the fire position, 180 degree rotation to the rear is the safe position, that locks the trigger. Uh, we have an open slide here, uh, vaguely reminiscent of a Beretta. Uh, now there's a heel magazine release, and the magazine currently in this pistol is not a Korovin magazine, so uh, the proper magazine would be blued. It would have seven witness holes here. Uh, it would have a square toe to it, um, and some of them actually have the Tula commercial arsenal stamp, which I'll show you. It's on the pistol here in a moment, but um, that's what the magazine ought to be. We have a manual bolt hold open right back here in the form of a little button. So you open the slide until that button lines up with that scalloped cut, and that will hold it open. Looking in a bit closer, there's our commercial Tula Arsenal mark. We have a serial number here on the slide and the frame, and we'll see it internally as well. Uh, just under 41,000, uh, which makes this a first pattern Korvin. There would be three separate patterns, and we'll go through those in just a moment. Um, there's your sight picture. What I kind of what I like about this pistol is I think it, it makes a really good compromise of size. Now the top end is a little bit tall. But in general this is a pistol where you can get two really good finger fingers wrapped around the grip. Uh, the trigger is in a reasonably comfortable position. The sights for a 25 ACP pistol are reasonably good. Um, it's a balance between being very compact and easily, you know, easily tucked away. You can see it's a very thin pistol, but also being large enough that you can actually get a reasonable grip on it, and you could probably shoot this quite accurately. 
So a lot of the little 25 caliber pocket pistols are just so tiny that you find yourself like trying to kind of hold on to them, and, and you just can't do it effectively. This is a, a nice compromise, I think. Now I mentioned that there are three different versions. I'm going to go ahead and take the grips off of these. Um, this one, of course, has wood grips on it. You will also find these with rubber, hard rubber vulcanized grips. That one. So the first pattern has these scalloped uh, cuts in the, the frame underneath the grip panels. Uh, the second pattern gets rid of those, but otherwise externally looks pretty much the same. Uh, one of the other things the second pattern will do is replace these screws. So on the first pattern the grips screw directly into the frame. On the second pattern they would have a little crossbar. There would be a grip screw in the center that holds on a crossbar that pivots and it locks into position under the sides of the grip frame. And that's something that's been done on a lot of other uh, pistol designs of the, the teens and 20s and 30s. So um, about 230,000 they add plastic grips. At about 400,000 they'll move to the third pattern, which is distinguishable because it doesn't have this lightning recess on each side of the slide. Uh, in general the gun's made a little bit heavier, the slide in particular, and this, it's the the research is a little bit murky on this, but it appears that at this point uh, Tula, or the Russian arms complex, decided to start making its own ammunition for these pistols, and they scaled it, they, they increased the pressure of the power by about 20%. So they, they pumped up the velocity on it. Think of this as uh, 25 ACP plus P. They called it 6.3 millimeter Tula instead of what would have been 6.35 millimeter Browning. Um, and apparently the third pattern Cordovine was made for this with a heavier slide, which in a blowback pistol, of course, will delay uh, the opening uh, to a, a safe time. All right, we can disassemble this pretty easily. The first thing I need to do is take out the safety. That's this pin, and it's just held in. It's actually held in by the mainspring guide rod acting as a little spring-loaded detent. So if I just pop that in a little bit, I can then pull the safety lever out. Then we're going to lock the slide open right there. And then to disassemble it we need to take the barrel out. So the barrel comes backward. This one's nice and tight, so I'm actually going to use the plastic end of a punch there, or of a hammer. Tap that back, and then that lifts out. So you can see the little grooves on the side of the barrel. Those lock into the frame right in there, and then you can see the half, the semicircular cutout. That is where the safety lever locks the barrel in place to ensure that it can't move when the gun's together. Once the barrel is out, then we can uh, deactivate the slide lock. You want to be careful here because as soon as the slide goes forward, that will come springing out if you let it. That's the slide lock button. And then we just pull the slide off the front of the gun. Oh, sorry, I probably should have decocked it first. But there's our striker and its spring. Here's our main guide rod and the main spring. And there's the frame. So the mechanics here are really pretty conventional. There's an extractor at the top of the breech face. The striker is going to sit in here, and you can see the little tail on it right there. The trigger is connected to a stirrup here that wraps around both sides of the magazine. And when I pull the trigger it's going to pull this down. That is going to release the striker right there. So once that goes down the striker gets pushed forward. Of course that, what I introduced at the beginning is the distinctive feature of a striker fired pistol. That's because that's where the striker spring sits to be held and, and compressed against. Now these two stirrups are our semi-auto disconnector. So once I pull the trigger this comes down, which will allow the striker to go forward. The slide will then come back on recoil, and it's going to push that stirrup down, which is going to reset the sear. So it will catch the striker and prevent it from firing a second time until I release the trigger and pull it again. And then each time, pop, it resets for semi-auto. We've got the main spring and its guide rod here. Unfortunately the spring on this one is broken in half. We'll just wind it up a little bit like that. This sits inside the frame 
like so. And when it's all the way in place, the end of the guide rod pops through there, where it will interact with the safety lever. So that, that little detent on the safety lever there lines up with the guide rod in this position. And that, that gives you a, a little force to keep the safety in that position. And there's a matching detent on the other side to keep it locked in the forward position. The way the safety actually functions as a safety is, when I pull the trigger, you can see that these two legs of the trigger come up into that cutout. Well, if the safety is in the fire position, there's a nice, there's a flat cutout there that allows the trigger to go forward. If the safety is in the safe position, those two legs hit the body of the safety lever and can't move. So really, it, it's a it's a simple pistol, uh, but very effective. Between all three of its variations, the Tula Coravin was produced from 1927 until 1935. And it appears, according to the literature, a really quite remarkable half million or more of these were manufactured. Where they all are today is something of a question. Um, there's some discussion that perhaps they were basically rounded up and destroyed after World War II. Who knows, maybe they're in a salt mine stockpile somewhere still. Uh, a few of them still survive. They still show up from time to time in collector circles, both in the US and in Europe, and uh, more so in Russia today. But I think a really interesting and really under, under known and underappreciated uh, pistol. Now, uh, after doing this, Korovin would remain in the arms industry until his death in 1946. During World War II, uh, he continued to work at Tula and did a lot of design work on extremely simplified submachine guns and mortars, the sort of thing that they would build and then like issue to troops 100 yards out the back door of the factory um, during the height of the German advance uh, into Russia. So, that's, that's where his work took him, and like I said, he died in 1946. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. It's a very neat little pistol. Thanks for watching.